Hello all, welcome back to another David Sheldon fishing. That was different. <laughs> well anyway, look, I've already made a fishing video. I popped down Parsons Beach to um, do a video about mullet fishing. Um, anyway, prior to that, I went through the mullet rigs for you beginners out there to help get you started. Um, and I went through the bait as well. But I left out one bait, which I have been led to believe was illegal to use or, you know, against the law. And that was mullet mints. And I know there's a few of you out there who think the same thing. It's the way it's written in the rules. Anyway, I did actually, I, as you know, a few of you that I have done a how to make mullet mints video. Um about three and a half years ago and I have had a few comments on that video that it was illegal and I did have a comment which was actually six months ago now but like two weeks before I made the first part of this video it's been a long time in regards to mullet mints being illegal so what I did was phone up the fisheries or purser and I spoke to actually one of the guys in charge who actually phoned me back the next day to verify that it wasn't allowed to use mincemeat for bait. So I actually mentioned that on this video, but then only today I found out that the guy who owned Tackle Busters in Victor Harbour, he phoned up fisheries because he was selling mincemeat and he was given the okay to sell mincemeat for fishing bait. And as it is, the bait supply has been given the okay too from that phone call. So there are tackle shops selling mincemeat for mullet bait, known as mullet mints. So, <laughs> I don't know. So as far as it looks, hey, we're allowed to use mincemeat for bait. And that is that. But, we, you know, no, non for, no, not for burly or anything like that because of sharks but yeah apparently if we a little bit on the hook is okay and I haven't got I want to put my video up today so I'm not going to wait till Monday to phone up the fisheries I'm just going to leave it if it's available it's it's done just use it okay so the video I've done is you know just a, a guide for mullet fishing the rig the rig covers all small fish off the beach and I've just gone through it and I hope you like the video. It goes on for a little while, but hey, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, sit back and watch and enjoy. All right. Worms, frozen worms. That's what I will be using when we go mullet fishing. Very good bait. Actually, I think worms are the number one bait. You can flavor them up. You can do whatever you want with a bait. El Natural is nice, very good. Next very good bait, you know, if the mullet are thick, I've actually had some of my best catches of mullet with maggots. Because um, when they're on the bite, you don't have to bait up so much and you can just pull them in real quick. <laughs> so yeah, maggots, another very good bait. You can also flavor your maggots with whatever you like. Pilchards. Mullet love any oily fish, a bit of froze. Any oily fish is great mullet bait. Um, especially tuna, bonito, absolutely awesome. If you wanna salt that down and play around with that for a bait, that's great, but a bit tricky to stay on the hook. Um, next bait is cockle. Everyone knows about the cockle. Cockle is very good for a lot of fish and it is also good for mullet. Um, you can flavor cockles with tuna oil, flavor all your baits with tuna oil, but tuna oil mixed with your mullet bait is great, but yeah, cockles are very good. And yeah, also the pilchard, the gut, the pilchard guts is very good. And good old bread, you can dough bread onto your hook, um, you can even make your own concoction dough bait and that works very good as well, especially in estuaries, you know, in rivers and estuaries, very good bait. Okay, 
So that's the bait bit. Right, this is pretty much the tackle that I need for mullet. Um, I got two different sorts of hooks here. They're both like number six and number eight. They are my favorite sizes for mullet. I've got the one with the longer shank. These are actually a worm hook, but I like the Pro Select in, the, in mustard as well, which is very good. And I also like these hooks too. That's a Daiatsu, Daiatsu hook or Daiatsu number six, kind of a suicide pattern. I've also got the same hook in a number eight. So there you go. So I like them hooks too. Hooks are like, it's a personal choice. It's whatever you like. Fishing is a personal thing. That's the beauty of it. You fish the way you want to fish, and that is that. There are certain ways you fish for certain fish, but you change it up to however you like, whatever works for you. What I show you is what I like to do, and it's, it's a guide, and I think you learners appreciate it. Okay, so they're my preferred hooks. Um, line, line off the beach is, you know, well, they're both 12, right? 12 pound is good, 10 pound is good, six or eight pound line is good for mullet. It depends on your situation. Like off the beach, I like to use around 12, 10 or 12 pound, eight's okay too, because you don't know what else you're gonna hook. Um, but it's good fun on light tackle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first tie a swivel onto my main line on straight directly onto my braid I'm not going to use a leader that's not necessary um, so yeah I'm gonna tie this swivel on I'll double my braid like I've said before just double that over through the eye of the swivel and a blood knot blood knot is fine two three four five six I'll go for seven through that eye back through there bet you get sick of me showing you that <laughs> all right we'll just pull that up nice and pull it up beautiful snip off this so your braid's tricky to cut isn't it bit okay swivel on right guys now we'll make the rig firstly with the 10 pound line I'm going to use 10 pound for the trace line um, I get the end of the line and I make a loop to connect the Padanoster rig, what we're going to make, to the swivel. So I, if I like, I can take the rig off and put a lure on. And I'm just going to wrap that loop down the main line. Okay. And then I'm going to go back through that loop. Just like that. Okay. And then just pull it tight. And there you have your first loop. Okay, we will snip off that little tag end. Right, and there, I'll just put that onto my swivel. Job done. Right, now I'll just line that up. Right now, just down from the swivel only. I don't know, 20 centimeters <laughs> will be fine. 20 centimeters will make another loop. Just grab your line, double it over, make the shape of a loop, and then wrap that loop down your line twice. 
If you only do it once, it'll slip out the loop. So that's why we do it twice. Right, once. Twice, okay. Then we put that eye back through that eye. There you have it. Of a beautiful dropper loop. Right now, just below that dropper loop, another 30 centimeters. We'll do another dropper loop. You can do the other type of dropper loop if you like, I've, what I've showed you. That is like this one. I'll do one here. Just double it like this. And then get your line and wrap it in the middle like this. So you've got two loops type. This middle loop wraps in the middle once, twice, three times, four times will be okay. Now we'll just get the outer loop like this bit and stick it back into this loop. I hope it's hard to see because I'm not using rope as a demo. But just stick that bit into that loop. Okay. See? And just pull it up tight. You can lubricate that before you pull it all the way. I will. Just wet that with my wet fingers. All right, and just pull it up tight like that. And that's the other way you can do a dropper loop. So there's two dropper loops. Hope you can see them. Right, so now at the bottom, probably another 25 centimeters, say, or probably 21, 22. <laughs> just there, uh, break it off and attach your other swivel with another blood knot. One, two, three, oops. One, two, three, four, five. And there you go. And pull it up nicely. Now, you don't really have to lubricate that because it's just holding your sinker on, isn't it? That won't come off, no worries. So there you go. And depending on what day it's going to be, is the sinker you might want to use. I got little star sinkers, you know, a couple of them little one ounce snapper sinkers I used, or you can use, well, any sort of light sinker. There's a professionally made spoon sinker made by the late Robert Kelly. He made some terrific sinkers and he was a terrific fisherman. So yeah, so whatever tomorrow brings, I might, I'll obviously use a burly spring to connect to that swivel and whatever sinker I choose will go on the bottom, just like that. All right, now I'll put the hooks on the rig. So we want, that's 10 pound on the line there. So it is actually good to use a bit heavier on your hooks because heavy, a bit heavier line won't twist as bad onto light line. So 10, 12 pound hooks onto a 10 pound line trace goes good but you can't have a 12 pound line trace here and 10 pound line because that will twist onto the 12 so it's 12 pound hooks onto a 10 pound line so right simply we'll get i'll get my hook i'm going to i'm going to use these hooks number six on the bit longer shanked and yeah Two of them on the rig, tied on with a blood knot as well. Four and five, back through, and back through. Okay, beautiful. I didn't use any lubrication then, but I did, it's okay. I didn't 
burn it. Snip it off with my teeth. <laughs> okay, that hook trace, not mega long, but a little bit because I actually do move my bait a lot when I'm mullet fishing. That helps immensely to catch mullet. Moving my bait all the time, even during the bites, moving the bait. I'll show you that when we're down fishing. But yeah, I'll just put this loop on the end here, wrap down the line, back up through that loop. Oh, it's hard for you to see, okay? A little loop, pull it tight. Okay, there's a nice little snood there. We'll cut off that. Beautiful, nice little hook snood. So now I'll connect this onto there. Um, I'll put the loop through there like a chap told me, and then put the hook, just hold that there, put the hook back through this loop. Lovely, and that just is on there, lovely. Look at that, nice. Anyway, okay, we'll try the next one. Another bit of 12 pound line. I'm gonna get another hook. Okay, tie that one back on. Three, four, five. Lovely, through the eye, back through the eye, pull it up, get a little bit of lubrication, pull it nice and tight there, lovely, always pull your knots up carefully, don't want them doing silly things, All right, and I'll just cut this off, a bit closer, there, and I will tie another loop here, it's good to tie a loop before you break it off your line spool because then you're not wasting any line. Again, I don't know, 20, 22 centimeters. Another loop. All right. And there you go. And we'll put this one onto the line. This time I'll just put the hook through the loop and just get hold of that and put the hook through that loop and pull it up tight onto the dropper loop. Lovely. So there you have it. I'll show you this rig. Hopefully you can see it. Lift that camera up a bit. One double hooked Paternoster rig. See that against my black jumper? That's why I'm wearing a black jumper so you can see it. Swivel, first hook, second hook, sinker. Oh, no break my rod. Okay, there you go. Lovely rig. Okay, the rod is what you call a sprat rod. Nice light rod, nice soft tip, um, small reel. The braid isn't super light, but you know, braid is very fine, so I can get away with that. That will still cast good in the surf. So yeah, sprat rod, nice light rod. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot, whatever rod you choose to use, but it has to be a nice light rod for little fish. Okay, fishing tackle shops can help you with that. So that's that. Then, you need burly pots for mullet fishing. There's a big one. Put bread, you know, bread in there. Bread in there, terrific. Burly for mullet, if that's all you got, that will do fine. Bread and a bit of tuna oil. If you got some pilchards, that will be really good too. Um, mullet heads, any fish heads, anything will bring mullet. You throw that in the wash on the edge of the beach, 
my Parsons Beach video I actually show using a burly bag. So yeah, perfect. You'll bring mullet everywhere with burly in a pot on a rope tied to your rod wrist or fixed to the beach whatever way you like and there's a nice fine you've got, if you're gonna use a bag you have to use fine mesh or all your bread's gonna go out and feed all the fish too quick burly very important for mullet very important for all fishing but mullet fishing big difference okay so that's that I'll also be taking a salmon rod um, you've seen all that before I'll show you that on the beach when I use it and yeah so Hope that's helped you guys. So we'll go fishing. Um, and yeah, next time you see me, I'll be on the beach. See you then, guys. Good day, guys. <laughs> Always good day, guys. Well, how are you going? We're back down on Parsons Beach. It's been a long time. I've just got to the bottom of the steps here come down that hill there and here I am the wind's supposed to be quite windy and you know this is supposed to be the calm it's about 1 4 30 now low tides at 6 30 but look how calm it is there's a lovely little like pool of a little hole down there that's where we're gonna head and hopefully we'll be able to get onto some mullet some yellow eye mullet to show you show you how good this rig works so I got the gear I got my bag got the burly bag everything so let's make our way down there it's nice isn't it let's make our way down there and get started okay we're ready well we're not ready <laughs> I gotta get my rods ready, but look, that's my burly bag. Just got pilchards and bread in there. If there's any mullet there out in that beautiful oh, it looks really nice actually. If there's no if I don't catch a mullet, there's no mullets here. But I've got my salmon rod, so we might get something, hopefully something. Anyway, that's my bag. Like I used down here before. Good length for rope and uh bottle to anchor it to the beach so I'm gonna go put it in now and get started Burly bag is in. Now I've just got to mix up a little bit of my uh, super duper burly. I got, I, got, I got a video I'm making that if you want to look at it. It's very good. Okay, so I'm going to put some burly in the container here, mullet bait in the other. And I'm going to add a little bit of fresh water in there to mix it up. That'll do that. Little bit of water. Angle that down for you. Oh, not too much or you ruin it. Stir it up with a float or a fish dish scourger or a stick anything you like that's good you don't want to make it too sloppy that'll stay in the spring nice like that right now I'll get my rod sinker on my rod wet my lips
it's nice to be down here. All right, we'll get started. Burley bags down there. You'll see it when we get down there. Because I noticed a little bit of weed in the water. Should be okay though. We'll get around that. Okay, I brought some maggots and I've got my worms too. There's some nice worms. They're not in bad condition. I don't metho them down or brine them, I just use them natural. But I've heard the metho is very good. That is also very good. Okay. My sinker of choice is going to be this one ounce snapper sinker. One of them what I made and a small bought burly spring. I'll just clip him onto my rig. Number six hooks tied to 12 pound line and 10 pound trace line. It actually won't twist as bad fishing like that. I'll clip him on. Excellent. Ready to fish. Good beauty. Let's go down on the beach on the edge of the water. I think I'll put a put a worm on the on the top hook. Nice, nice bit of worm. And I'll put some maggots on the bottom one. I just put the maggots on anyway, just so long as they're on the hook. Quite amazing what the fish can see out there in the water. <laughs> and their noses, their noses are pretty good too. All right, let's just uh, leave it like that. Early in the spring. Hook my fish bag. Let's begin. And there's the burly baggy. I think you can see that. Let's go. Now if there's mullet here, they will come riding close. They generally hug the shoreline. You know, there's a mullet season. Mullet season like February through to May and you know, right through to June, July too. But mullet live in the surf. They're generally here all year round.
well, it's a start, I guess. <laughs> Little salmon trout, juvenile salmon. On the maggots. This time, little Tommy Ruff. There he is. Little tiny Tommy Ruff. Oh, I'll let him go. bigger there you go we have a little juvenile mullet and another little juvenile Tommy Ruff excellent both can go back oh no sorry that one's a salmon trout they look very similar no, <laughs> it's a Tommy. Silly me, shows how long I've been fishing for. Tommy and the mullet, both can go back. Burley's working, isn't it? When there's lots of mullet there, rather than just striking all the time like this, just move your bait really slow and that hooks them real good. You don't really have to strike much at all. There we go. Get in. That was a little fish. The little Tommy Ruff. A few of them out there. That'd be terrific bait. There is no legal size for Tommy Ruffs, but you know, if you don't really need them and they're small, you may as well let them go. Something a bit better. Hope it's a mullet. Oh, it's a salmon trout. Well, hey, not a bad little fish, actually. He'll go nice in the pan. And he's on the maggots, see? Yum. Fish love maggots. 
and I don't have to put any more on for bait. I have got my salmon rod, we'll finish off with that. So I've broken his neck, dispatched him into the pillowcase. tell you what there will be I reckon there will be some salmon here I'm just showing you how how this rig is so good this rig is good for a lot of fishing you know the old Padanoster rig is good for a lot of fishing all you're doing is changing the strength of your line and the size of the hooks to suit whatever fish you're fishing for and this is what I like to use. This rig will cover yellowfin whiting, tommies, mullet, small salmon trout, you name it. That's what it's all about. Just showing you guys how to get out and catch fish. Another little mullet. The bigger guys were there, we'd be catching them. No worries. On the maggots. Let him go. There are fish everywhere. <laughs> if you're coming out fishing for big fish, you, caught, you start the food chain with a burly bag and then fish for Mulloway. You, you're using burly to create burly. <laughs> this fish is a little bit better. Let's hope it's a mullet. Oh, it is a mullet. No, it's not. It's a Tommy Ruff. All right. He can go with my other one, a little bit bigger. It's all about fun, getting a feed. Only what you need though. I need heats because I don't get out much lately. <laughs> a little bit bigger bait of maggots and a little bit bigger bait of worms. Maggots on the top and worm on the bottom. It's going to flick it out a little bit further. Might be a salmon trout sitting out there. Or even a bigger salmon. They'll take it. a bit bigger bigger the fish are probably sitting more at the back waiting for all the burly washing out another little Tommy rough he's going home that's three tommies and a salmon trout for my seafood pizza. There's a little baby juvenile salmon. He's going back. The little Tommy. It's okay. Very tasty.
Not a little tummy. There's lots of little tummies out there. That one can go back. Take out the size of that mullet. <laughs> Little guy. Two juvenile salmon trout. Little guys. Two of. So many fish there. Good fun, especially if you're with your children. They would love it. Good fun. Little bit of burly. A few maggots. Maggots stay on the hook really well. Or cockle. Yeah. Maggots are good for kids. That's what I reckon. Not just because I breed them. <laughs> there they are. Lovely. Tommy Ruffs. Bottom one's not too bad. Top one's a little bit smaller. Nice looking little fish, aren't they? Awesome. I kill them, I squeeze them between the eyes and it kills them straight away. It's humane. I'll let him go as well. Oh, I do need a bit of squid bait, so I'm going to keep a couple for squid. A mullet. A little baby mullet. They are mullet. <laughs> they're not real big, but they're, <clears throat> they're mullet. He's just hanging off that number six hook. Awesome. Put him back. He is undersized. Nice bait. how I cast a lot of the time you don't have to go overhead all the time do a little underarm flick well this is a bit better hmm. oh it might be a mullet I think it just got off oh no he's still on huh. guess what it's a tommy rough Another Tommy on the maggots. He's going home. Like I said, they're not very big, but they're legal. They're all legal. And you're allowed 40 of them. And they are very tasty, smoked, or whatever way you want to do them. But these are going on a pizza. Well, some of them. When you crumb them or batter them, oh, yum. Yummy, yummy. Awesome. I've gone and left my other glasses in the car. So I can't change glasses. So I've got to wear sun sunglasses when it goes dark. My eyes aren't the best anymore. But um, they're not bad. I might, I'll be able to take them off. Of course I will. I'm going to fish for salmon soon. Salmon trout. There he is. 
Double header. That top one's not too bad. He's definitely going home. Lovely little Tommy. Nice little little black spots on his tail there. Salmon trout haven't got that. And they feel rough. Why are they called Tommy Ruffs, I guess? Nice. Fingers each side of his head. Just squeeze. And he's gone. There's his little mate on the bottom. I'll keep him for a squid. I'm allowed to. Well, a couple more casts and I'm salmon fishing. Gonna relax a little bit, unless the salmon are on. Worm, heap of worm on the hook. Got a few little morsels in there. I'm gonna get my salmon rod, okay? But we'll be doing this again. But this is pretty much the way to fish for yellow eye mullet. We will be doing it again, okay? I'm gonna go get my salmon rod. Right, I have the salmon rod. I got some, got some nice pilchards. Yeah, I got a handful of cockles, nice pilchards, so let's get baited up, see if we can get a salmon, that would be nice. Same way as I always do, roll my hooks in towards the head, put a half inch around the tail and the shank of the hook, that's what I do anyway, then I break it off, there's a lovely little bait, okay, and the bottom hook I will put a bit of cockle on. Cockles aren't shelled, so I gotta shell them, pull them out. I'll just put the two on. If you want to learn how I rig up, you just go back to my salmon rigging video. I got another video down here just fishing with well way ping just fishing with cockles and fishing with just pilchards over here i like to use two baits generally small number one hooks because a lot of the time the fish are small not very big but i can get the big fish on the small hooks too 
there's some pilchard in my burley spring and it's probably only a two ounce sinker one of them one i made in my how to make sinker video <laughs> right let's start fingers crossed might get something a bit bigger it out a lot further this time into the lot deeper water I reckon all the smaller fish will be pushed in closer probably to avoid the bigger fish a bit of early in the bag that's good doesn't it all the breads most of the bread is gone still a lot of pilchards that's why you need to put it in a finer in a finer mesh bag in the bigger mesh bag that lasts a lot longer better on the cockle that one <laughs> yes he's all right look around there that Pacific gull in my bag so I've got to go get him you gotta watch your bait around here well they will steal it they're pretty clever I think a school of them's coming. You little beauty. Oh. 
nice fish. Oh, a few of them will be nice. <laughs> awesome, actually. It is when you don't get out a lot. We had a crab. Yeah, I've got a light. We had a good crab on then as well. Nice. Well, pretty happy. Go home soon. Back's getting heavy, back's aching. Oh. A happy man, that's for sure. guys I'm gonna have a couple more casts then um, I'm going home a happy fisherman that bag of fish awesome It's starting to come in now. Well, that's that. Let's go up there and see what I've caught. Then we're out of here.
thank you for watching guys pretty happy with that little session um, yeah I hope you you beginners picked up a tip or two yeah with the mullet I know I didn't get any big mullet but hey you saw how the rig works you saw how the burly bag works and yeah it turned out to be quite good I'm going home with a nice feed of fish um, there's the fish I've put them all on display with the fishing rods of course well, what do you think pull that out there you go a few nice salmon trout small salmon and a nice swag of little tommies a couple of bigger ones caught a couple of little mullet but yeah over there very good so the next time you see me I'll be making a seafood pizza <laughs> um, and maybe doing some quick local like fishing whiting a bit, <clears throat> a bit of garfish <clears throat> a bit of garfish and um, whatever I can do because I'm going to get really busy now with my maggots all right Thank you for everything, thank you for commenting and all that stuff. Like I always say, it's appreciated. All right, see you guys. Now I gotta walk up that hill. Okay, bye-bye. Adios.